And I could see that I, I was living that as like a really great gift to me to be witnessing in person the, the birth or the hatching of the first chick ever. And that is why we call Clarita the mother of Pedral. And, uh, and I think she, she, she's a symbol of hope. Twelve years ago, uh, we discovered a brand new colony. Uh, only six pairs of nests were settling down in, in a new place. So we went there. Uh, so you have the cliff, like a strip of vegetation. Then you have a giant bay of big pebbles, you know. And uh, so the place is called Pedral because piedra in Spanish is, you know, like stone. That is why it's called Pedral, big area with stones, it would be the translation. So when we got to the waterfront immediately, I could see the, the nests. Just one nest is really important. It's a big decision. I mean, if there is a one nest, two nests, you can call that, you know, a breeding settlement. It's like a colony starting. Normally, when you go to a wildlife place, you expect to see, you know, wildlife, everything clean, neat and tidy, but there were lots of plastics and broken bottles and pieces of cars and um, filters of the engines of the cars. Uh, you could see the places where they were making barbecues with the fires. I mean, that was not a place for penguins. That was not a place. That is not the pristine image that, that you normally have or expect to have when you go to these places. So that's where we decided, oh, we need to protect this colony. It was very difficult at the beginning it was very stressful, but then the colony kept on growing. And I could see with my own eyes the first chick that hatched in that colony. And um, Clarita was the mother of the first chick that hatched there. And that is very unusual experience because sometimes colonies, it's not that there is a colony appearing every single year or every 10 years. Sometimes it happens every hundreds of years, thousands of years. And I could see that, I, I was living that as like a really great gift to me, to be witnessing in person the, the birth or the hatching of the first chick ever. And that is why we call Clarita the mother of Pedral. Clarita is a Magellanic penguin. She brought light to, to that colony because she contributed with the first chick that hatched there. And, uh, and I think she, she, she's a symbol of hope. Maybe they could have abandoned the area, but they kept on coming back and more. And so the colony went from six to 45, 70, 180, until now that we are almost close to 3,000 pairs and it keeps on growing. Sometimes we, when we are resting after a long day of field work, and I see so many penguins coming in and out, nesting, so many chicks. I said, I mean, this is happening because we decided to do something. We took the risk and, and it really worthwhile. They gave me an energy and I realized that I would never give up. You know, I would never give up. It doesn't matter what, how big the challenge is, if it's about fisheries, about oil, about development, about, you know, human disturbance. They gave me the, the energy and they always reminded me that it really worthwhile to make the effort. I think I owe my grandmother uh, everything. <laughs> I always uh, tell that the first person that ever told me about something that was called a penguin was my grandmother. Uh, she used to live here in Patagonia, Argentina, a hundred years ago. And, and she used to go to the coastal areas with horses and wagons to visit the penguins. She was a very special woman. I think she kind of left a deep message inside of me and, and a connection with wildlife and nature through the stories of penguins. I always remember the first time I visited a, a penguin colony by myself. Uh, and I remember being surrounded by almost half a million penguins. You can see all the barrels from there. So it's like a penguin, you know, capital city. And 
and you could hear, of course, you have the sea coming in, you, you can hear the waves, but the most overwhelming, positively overwhelming thing is the sound of the penguins, you know? These penguins, they bray like donkeys. They would go something like, <laughs> this is the normal <laughs> kind of thing they do. But imagine thousands of penguins braying at the same time at dusk. I think it's one of the most fantastic wildlife spectacles I've ever seen because you have penguins everywhere, absolutely splendid. I like to describe that moment like a, an epiphany moment. And I just knew that I had to dedicate my life to penguin conservation. I was 18 years old, more or less. And the following year, there was a very big oil spill here. And in two months, 17,000 penguins died due to that single oil spill. Uh, so I set up a rehabilitation center in that same colony to help penguins. My grandmother and the penguins, they, they are unafraid of challenges, you know? <laughs> the, the, the interesting thing is that, well, um, when that big oil spill was happening, um, she, she was diagnosed cancer and we knew she was going to have four months. So I used to send the pictures of the penguins. We were rehabilitating, you know, and keeping her kind of um, entertain with what was happening here. And I, I think it was very, very, it was a great thing to do for her because during the, her last moments, she could connect also with what I was doing uh, for, for the penguins. And at some point I realized that when I go to a penguin colony, I am connected, connecting with my grandmother. I've been working with penguins for 31 years old now, uh, for 31 years. So, so yes, yes, I, I think and I hope that, that she, she's proud of, of, of what I've done for the penguins and, and for the planet.